that part is chills every time. Fantastic. I love that chorus, it's so good. The way the breakdowns in this like drop off a cliff as well, so sick. Not even the breakdown, just the big like fucking heavy moments. Symphonic 2000s metalcore, it's sick. Oh my god, he said the name of the title in the song. Shut the f up. Why are you all complaining about that? I love that chord progression. That's catchy as f Gojira. Gojira. There's a Gojira breakdown coming. Death is waiting on me. Symphonic Jira. This is the reckoning. Death is waiting on me. You sick and lie. Death is waiting on me. Excuse me. I was showing you for Jack in the chair. Let me have fun. Let's hope he doesn't say the song title in this song. like to discount this entire song although the course is great he happened to say the title of the song in it so i will not be listening to midinance anymore you lot are literally sid the sloth like every single one of you is that complain about that that's all i hear just sid the sloth you'll fucking sit on an acorn wait that's not sid the sloth is it i've mixed up sid the sloth and the squirrel from ice age but we'll brush over that i feel like this track is probably the least dynamic for it to be the longest that we've heard so far it does kind of drag for how pretty simple it is but i do really like it. i think the chorus is great This is gorgeous.
开导。Man, the riffs are so like early 2000s. This is hitting. That's gonna go so hard live with the rage call out. Yeah, this track is a belter. Very good solo. It's still not better than uh, track number six though. Definitely not better than that. But it does fucking rip to be fair. fucking phenomenal modern musician like his range on this album has been insane like we got the fucking real deathcore track earlier on some of his choruses have been fantastic his ability to kind of like build that atmosphere in the more slow buildy sections is just fucking gorgeous and then he's playing the violin on top of that it's fucking mental he really does i don't want to say carry this band but he is definitely the fucking focal point i know there's like lead personalities of a band for a reason but this guy really takes center fucking stage you know last track in the album also technically the title track just in a different language so let's see <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm ballroom dancing during the French Revolution when I listen to this song. That was absolutely beautiful as an outro for the album. And um, yeah, it'd be interesting. I don't know, like the black does feel like a very... Okay, sorry, I could hear the drill again. Uh, the black does feel like the closer for sure. Um, but that is definitely a welcome closer as well. It's just beautiful. Um, interesting that they have like a three minute closer like that. And then they also have the track number 10 which is four minutes of an instrumental as well that close to each other but man chat get your ratings in for the album as a full um i'm gonna go back to the screen for a moment i'll let you guys right away uh let me why is it still showing up on the screen i need to update that app it's a bit shit um let me go back to here then so you can see the rating uh let me see also i timed out captain there at the end that's why i was laughing bro was just yapping away timed out this is not a democracy, my friends. This is fucking... What's the opposite of democracy? What's that thing called? Uh, what's that word? I don't know what the word is. Communism! This is a communist fucking chat. You chirp up, out. I'm joking, by the way. But it is funny to ban Captain because he fucking never shuts up. Um, Right. Chat is saying 8.7 for this, man. Chat is saying 8.7. Interesting. Interesting. This feels like the North End one, man. I don't know. Like, I mean, if you look at the amount of tracks that are in my, my playlist that I've liked, good Lord. I've essentially liked every single song in the album, apart from the, like, instrumental tracks. Heaven Shall Burn isn't a bad song at all. I just don't really feel like I've gone back to that much, that one much. Um, As a whole, man, it really feels like 
I don't know how intentional it is, but track one, two, three, four, and five feel like they are a little bit more so in the ballpark of what people kind of have had problems with imminence for because i feel like everyone from what i've heard from the majority of people and what seems to be the case across the board is that everyone thinks that imminence have been one of these bands that has so much potential but not quite lived up to it just because their song structures have been a little bit predictable and samey and the first five tracks although i do really like them as you can see you know come hell or high water i think it's just a fun track it's so much melody i love the l of the violin Desolation, like I said earlier on, not the most technical song, sounds kind of like Architects in certain parts and has a great fucking chorus. Beyond the Pale was obviously a newer track and Death by a Thousand Cuts is again a track that I think is, this is why it feels almost intentional to me to have like the first part of the album is seem, seemingly for the fans that love that like style of imminence, the stuff that they've been doing for the last couple albums where people are kind of sick of and just like all of it starts to sound the same. And it's almost as if the track that feels the most like that is Death by the Death, Death by a Thousand Cuts. This feels like the most, like, predictable, like, just straightforward structure, structure song. But it's almost like it's so intentional because it's the last track of that, like, in that vein, if that makes sense. Because then after that, I think the second part of the album feels like not so much a new territory for Eminence because they've obviously had moments of absolute brilliance in their discography from what I've heard. Again, I haven't heard their full discography, but from the tracks that I've heard, they've got some really sick moments. But Cul de Sac to me is one of the best songs they've ever released. Not Cul de Sac, sorry. Come What, come what May. Come What May. Come What May. Feels like this is like the almost gateway into this semi new realm from what I've heard from them. It really gets very experimental. Not so much experimental, but just like that promise and i think that expectation that so many people have had from imminence again i think no one really like comes from the point of view that imminence are just a shit band i think everyone knows that they have a lot of potential but sometimes they just haven't lived up to it and i think this come what may track is like exactly what i've had pictured in my head i think that's exactly you know all this time when i've had any complaints about particular singles that were released or anything in their discography it's always been with something like this in mind. Of course, it's like very hard for me to say, oh, this is how it should be, or this is what I'm expecting. But this is definitely like the best example that I can think of. Chills all over my body. The violin had such a prominent moment. It was just absolutely beautiful. The rest of the song was still like a fucking sick metal track as well. Eddie's vocals across the board. All the tracks are phenomenal. It goes without saying Eddie's a standout of this album by an absolute mile. The fact that he's doing the violin and screaming, his lows, his highs, he has like some deathcore moments in there his singing sections so much melody throughout the entire album i don't get the criticism that i don't know it's just become a meme i don't know where it really came from but like i've heard it before like that the criticism of the band is that like i, I don't i don't know like i've only ever heard, like started to pay attention to the fact that they sing the lyrics to the song title in the chorus like uh, like the title the title of the track is always the chorus i, I don't maybe i just I'm only paying attention to hyper analyzing it because I've heard people have that critique before, but it just seems like the deadest, like what? I don't get it. Why is that such a big problem? Like, is that not what majority of songs are? Like North Lane's song After Image. I can't ignore the after image. Like it's in the song. I guess the only argument I can think of that is the song is just called After Image. It's not called I can't ignore the after image. It's not the full song. I think that's what people have a problem with. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, personally, it makes no difference to me like it's just kind of funny that people find that to be annoying but it is what it is uh each to their own but i mean by looking at that man that's a fucking great return on investment for a 50 minute long album i mean look at the amount of tracks i've liked here one two three four five six seven eight you know it's a good album but it's faster to count the tracks that i haven't liked than the tracks that i did that is a great fucking album for me i think track of the album it kind of has to be come on may i think it has all of the fun moments that we've gotten in the singles that i really loved plus more very proggy very experimental but also still very imminence you know it's not like veering too far away from what i actually love imminence for in the first place with the violins yeah man and um, i thought the only weird choice was having these two tracks so close to each other like this is four minutes of a like i guess the interlude section uh, it's called a sack like a little section as well that's an instrumental yeah like i mean it's a bit weird to have these breaks like this is two and a half minutes of just instrumental this is four minutes and this is three minutes now i don't mind it too much as the outro but to have these so close feels a bit odd um but 
at the same time it's still beautiful so i'm not going to complain about it um so i don't know what i'm going to go for uh, album writing for this one i think um all things considered forgetting about the singles being singles i think this is imminence's best album from what i've heard anyone else i haven't heard their full discography so maybe i'm i'm chirping up here a little bit but i think this is this is their uh this is imminence's best album and i was unsure i was unsure there was a, a few things in my brain just from the singles that i was like oh this could you know it could go anyway like literally coming into this i was like this could be very just mid it could just be right down the middle i don't like saying mid in that way because it just becomes like silly but this could be like completely split where there's some decent songs and the rest are a bit shit but i think the album flow of this was absolutely perfect it was really really solid and um, i'm gonna give this album an 8.7 out of 10 i think that's an 8.7 out of 10 album there was no moments in it that i really felt let it down at all no real moments like i mean the first portion of the album to me is like the more accessible maybe even more catchy moments of the album and then the second part of the album is like epic goosebumps you know the other kind of more majestic side of imminence whereas the first part was like the kind of more core metalcore style of imminence you know and um, so it was a great blend across the board i think it was really really solid and um, let's play come at me 